live stream in which I'm going to bring to you an interview that I pre-recorded with one of the greatest bartenders in the world. He also took the time to do uh, a video to show here, making an old fashioned. And his name is Charles Jolie. He is a phenomenal bartender and now owns his own brand. You're gonna get to learn more about that here in a bit. Uh, I'll be putting in the comment section links of how you can get um, his uh, batch cocktail. And it is so good. Charles Jolie is like one of the most iconic, uh, important people in the rise of, uh, of the current bartending movement. I am just such a huge fan of Charles. I always have been. And he's a really, really good friend of mine. Um, and our relationship started when I used to write for a magazine called Tasting Panel. Now, Tasting Panel is a trade-focused magazine. And that's really where I cut my teeth as a spirits writer. And they would send me all over the world uh, because I could take pictures and write stories. And um, Charles was one of the one of the first bartenders that I felt like I really kind of bonded with. Just an incredible talent. Great guy. Uh, before we get to that, I want to make sure that everyone has checked out the new issue of Bourbon Plus. This is a um, one of my favorite issues that we've done. We featured um, Jackie Zykin. You can see there we have a lot of really cool photos. And I dare say, I bet you we are the... Uh, first uh, magazine in the spirit space to publish somebody in a hoodie like this. Like, I just this is my favorite photo of the of the set. I just love this photo. But uh, we we pride ourselves on having all original photography, about having um, you know original writing, and so you don't get any like canned related stuff from us. Uh, so make sure that you, get, you pick this up. You can actually find it at Whole Foods, which is still considered an essential store out there right now. But um, yeah, so I hope you get a chance to check this out. This is, this is a great issue. And now I wanna, I wanna introduce you to my friend, Charles Jolie. Enjoy this interview, everybody. After this, I'll come back on and uh, have some comments, but I will also, um, you know, show you an interview or, or, or show you the video of him making an old fashioned. Enjoy. And hey, Charles Jolie's joining me on the on the show. What's up, brother? How you doing? As well as everybody else is right now. Uh, well provisioned and uh, have a roof over my head and a dog to keep me company. So not 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 too shabby. Yeah. And that dog of yours is adorable. I love that. What he's a? Uh, how old is he now? Oh, he's about six or seven. He's a little rescue pound pity. So yeah. Now is a great time for people to get out there and find their fur baby. I know one of our local shelters sent out about fifty dogs last week. Uh, perfect time. You're stuck at home. You want to get a new companion. Now's the now's the time to find that and get nothing but time and attention to give. So. Yeah, those uh, those little baby baby pups, man, they're special. So you're uh, you won you've won so many bartender awards I can't even keep up but you know you're best known I guess for winning uh, world's best bartender what was that three years ago now three four years ago or yeah I'm old news buddy uh, that show 2014 <laughs> still uh, but good still guys. the only American to, to at this point the only American to win world class until and then. So tell us, uh, tell us about that process, about uh, going into cocktail competitions. Sure. I, I mean, this is, you know, I've been in the game for over 20 years now. We're, we're not spring chickens. So back when the, the whole cocktail movement kicked off, you know, uh, like, you know, 12, 15 years ago, started to whisper, you know, um, we used those things to, to meet one another. The community was really small. Uh, the movement was in its infancy, and so uh, we did we did those comps to uh, kind of find other like-minded individuals and and to, to learn some new things. Um, world class was a, you know it's the biggest it's the it's the Olympics of bartending if you will. Uh, so I, I was almost retired I would say in terms of bartending competitions at that point, 
Um, but when I saw the, the global scale of it, I, it got me really excited to work with bartenders from all over the world, 60 countries, see what everybody was doing and um, get in the mix again. Right, right on. And then you, then you started your own, uh, your own line. You've got, uh, you were kind of ahead of the curve on, uh, on like these ready, ready to drink cocktails that are, you know, kind of crowding the market right now. Yeah, we had, we had, we launched Craft House over six years ago. Actually, this was totally not planned, but. Uh, Look at that, a little Moscow Mule action. And we just redid our uh, little minis as well, uh, 200 mLs. I love the Paloma. Yeah. That we got was, some bourbon uh, too, though. We got yeah. a gold rush. Um, That's right. Mix. Yeah. So, yeah, we kicked that off like six years ago. And, and I think we were early because we weren't chasing any trends with it. We were, we saw a need. And um, it was my, the owner of the cocktail bar that I was running at that time. He and I had worked together for over 10 years. And um, we saw people wanting to make cocktails at home. And they just, they'd always say, it's not quite like in the bar, you know. So, like, uh, we, we just sat down one night and we're like, hey, can we, can we bottle as close to what we do in the bar and, and get this mm -hmm. to people so they can just have it at their parties, have it at, you know, BYOBs, have it at a, a basketball game, what, whatever it might be. Have it when you're sequestered at home during, you know. The, right. <laughs> who, who knew? We didn't, we, this was not on the list of places to, to, to enjoy, but uh, it turns out when you're, when you're stuck at home. Uh, a decent cocktail can bring a little brightness too. That, that's right, it can. Now, can you can you ship, or do you have someone who can ship to people? Uh, no, we're in eleven states right now. You know, how shipping goes with booze. Our um, our government has a has wisdom in in, hmm. in in many places, and alcohol is one of the places where the uh, stupidity extends to. As you well know, we run this country uh, like basically fifty different countries. Uh, makes it pretty tough. So you can't ship really across state lines legally. Um, and so we're in 11 states. Uh, it's going well. We've got some nice partners. Um, you know, obviously once uh, once we get uh, through the thick of this as well, uh, we have lots of lots of cool partnerships coming online with some hotels and um, entertainment venues and things like that. Right on. All right. Yeah. So everybody, everybody's at home right now. How? Uh, Give it. Give us some tips on how to make cocktails at home. What are some tips you have for folks at home right now? Sure, man. I, I mean, it's you know, I think you and I probably have a, a little more well-stocked bar uh, because we're we have a, you know we have a problem, uh, but we get paid for it, so we don't need to go <laughs> right. to meetings. That's all right. Uh, but um, I think it's it's keep it simple, and this is for 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 everybody. It's stuff that you already have in your home. I've always said you don't need a lot of um, uh, you don't need a you don't, you don't need to get a big shopping list to get started. You know you've got sugar in the cupboard, so you can make some simple syrup already. Um, you know if you got some citrus, fantastic, uh, or pick some up. And 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 I think right now I'm looking for all sorts of ways to utilize things across the board to to not just squeeze the, the, the juice and then toss the husk, but you know, let's let's use this the peel for garnish or oils or zest that I can throw into something that I'm cooking. Um, whatever. At, at at worst, put those into your garbage disposal so they clean it up a little bit when you when you're doing it. So I think it's about getting a little bit creative. But you you'd be surprised with what you have at home, uh, what you can do. Uh, if you've got fruit that's gonna that's gonna turn, you can you can uh, you know it's super ripe right now, and you're like this doesn't have too many more days left. Turn that into a syrup, or do an infusion with it, or puree it and throw it into ice cube trays, and toss those into the freezer, and then you can pull those out. And um, you know, if you're making a whiskey sour and you've got some blueberry ice cubes, like that's pretty baller. It's going to be pretty delicious. A uh, little a simple, simple, you know, riff on that. Um, but I mean, think about what what you drink and what 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 I drink and what most bartenders drink when they're off duty. Um, they're three, four ingredient cocktails, you know. Uh, it's back to the essence of the cocktail: booze, sugar bitters, you know, water. Mm -hmm. And if you're making a sour, then add add some citrus in there. That's and that's really all you need to uh, to do is master nail those fundamentals, and then you do quite a bit. So, what is the for me like the the one thing that when I'm making cocktails that I can't have? You know, every one of my cocktails that I make has to have some type of citrus 
What sure. is your like for like your personal consumption? What is like your one thing that you have to have for your cocktails? Uh, <laughs> booze. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's an easy one, right? Yeah, I do. Um, I do tend to making sour cocktails. You know, those that contain mm-hmm. citrus that are a little bit brighter, more refreshing. I drink them more often than I do. Um, I'd say probably 65-35 split to mm-hmm. spirit forward cocktails. Just they're a little bit slower sipper. They're a little bit lower ABV. So if I'm gonna, you know, if you're gonna be having a few drinks, it's just it's nice. It keeps you um, keeps you a little steady. But I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I love a I love a stirred down cocktail as as well, um, but I mean, again, like stuff I've let, stuff I've made in the last few days, even like I whipped up some Tommy's margaritas, um, stuff I had in the house, limes, agave nectar, in the you know in the fridge, it's nice blanco tequila, um, made some daiquiris, like made a gin martini the other night, like you know with a nice little vermouth, some nice bitters that you had sitting around. Um, so yeah, it's simple. I mean, literally, those are all three ingredient cocktails. So. Yeah, and of course, right now people are uh, reading that the hot toddy might be an effective treatment in uh, it, if you get coronavirus. Is there any any Oof. tricks to your uh, hot toddies? I, I first of all, I would I would not. I'm not a doctor, so I would not necessarily uh, prescribe any uh, alcohol for uh, any sort of sickness. Um, That's but, a very uh, very valid point there. Yeah. <laughs> but a, a hot toddy is delicious on its own. Uh, I think if you're sick, you should probably lay off the booze, regardless of what our parents did back in the day. Um, I know I have very, uh, very clear memories of my dad making hot toddies when he would have a cold, and you know, to try and clear it up. But uh, I don't think alcohol does anything good for our our systems in that sense. But it, uh, uh, but a hot toddy, when you're healthy, I think is a, a delicious. Um, a delicious concoction, whatever you got at home, a little sugar, a little honey, a little like whatever sweetener you want to toss in there, a little citrus zest. Um, obviously works works best, I think, with uh, with aged spirits, really lend themselves to those those warm cocktails. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I, I seem to um, recall you like mixing uh, tea with uh, some of your uh, cocktails as well. Like you were one of the early people making uh, cocktails using nice, beautiful black tea. Do you still uh, play around with the tea? I'm drinking a cup of tea right now in my my Uh mug from uh, from Maine Craft Distilling that says most likely not rum, but no guarantees. Uh, This indeed indeed is tea. Uh, Yeah, tons of it, man. We have an amazing tea purveyor and, and you can actually order the stuff online called Rare Tea Cellars. Uh, out of Chicago, and I've always referred to these guys as my flavor arsenal. Um, thousands of different teas. Uh, they bring in truffles. They bring in all kinds of other cool ingredients. Um, this incredible uh, truffle-infused barrel-aged maple from a really small maple producer. They did incredible. Um, but yeah, I think it's great, especially when you know tea doesn't go bad. It's you keep it in a nice uh, airproof, airtight container. Uh, it's a great, you can make syrups out of it. You can make dilutants with it. If you're making a punch, if you're making a big batch of something, uh, instead of putting water in to cut something, put in some tea so you're adding flavor instead of just watering it down. Um, you can make your ice with it if you wanted to, but yeah, mm-hmm. I love it as an ingredient. Um, uh, especially, you know, where you're, you're pretty much five hours South of where I'm at in Chicago. Right. Um, and, uh, so we need to get a little more creative in the winter months like what are we gonna you know we're not getting produce the way that uh, the west coast does so uh it's it's teas it's jams it's it's shrubs and preserving things and vinegar and what whatnot um you got to figure it out and get a little bit uh, get a little bit crafty with it so you have big flavors all winter long yeah well and uh hopefully this we, we can get out of the house here soon and grab a drink together i'm sorry i missed you in san francisco this year but yeah. Uh, due due to the travel stuff, um, you know, and my wife's position at the hospital, I yeah. couldn't make it. But I missed you guys. You were, yeah, you were missed. You were missed. We we did uh, we did we did well. We had it was a great it was a great year, uh, regardless. And uh, it was just happened right on that cusp of when everything was kind of coming together, and we were starting to learn what what was happening here. So, um, yeah. But uh, I hope. Uh, 
hope you all are well and, and take care and uh, have a sensible dram and let us know what you're drinking and, and uh, we'll be be posting some things as well doing the same right on so thanks for joining me Charles you got a you got a cocktail we'll be sharing here uh, in a in a bit a little video that we'll add to the show so I uh, look forward to showing that to everybody brother good seeing you all right you. man take care Cheers. Everybody. thanks peace so that was my interview with Charles Jolie. Uh, we've got the cocktail that he's making uh, coming up here. We've had a really nice, uh, it looks like we've had a lot of people come in and make some comments. So some background on Charles. Charles uh, won uh, World Class a few years ago, and that's basically the, the, the most iconic, most important uh, cocktail competition, and it's uh, put on by Diageo. And basically, they take the world's best bartenders and they put them through everything. And whoever wins, you know, wins. And they do it by districts and states and countries. And Charles is the only American to have won uh, that competition. So this cocktail that you are about to see be made is arguably made by the very best uh, American bartender of all time. And believe me. I've had Charles drinks. Charles Charles can make a cocktail like uh, nobody else. And the thing about it is, is he's not pretentious. A lot of times when people get to that level, they become pretentious and they don't have time for their old friends or anything. Uh, Charles, uh, like he, he grew and he just wanted to adopt a puppy, you know, and so like he... He, that's basically um, the extent of, of what I think of Charles. He's just a great human being. He cares about people. Um, he's got a cute little puppy. If you go follow him on Instagram, he's got a bunch of pictures of him and his little uh, you know, pit bull uh, pup as a rescue dog. And now, without further ado, I will let you uh, watch Charles make a cocktail that... Um, you should make it home after this. Hey, I'm Charles Jolie from Chicago, founder of Craft House Cocktails and designer of Craft House by Fortessa Barware. I wanna thank Fred for inviting me on to share one of my favorite cocktails, many of our favorite cocktails, the old fashioned. The version I'm going to make for you today is the double smoked coffee old fashioned. So using the same base as all old fashioned. So we've got our booze, we've got whatever one you want to use for your sugar, uh, and our bitters. We're gonna get some water in there, of course, through uh, stirring and dilution, a little bit of orange oil, optional. I grew up in the Midwest, so I am quite familiar with the muddled orange and cherry variation of the old fashioned as well. Hey, however you wanna drink, it is your cocktail. There is no wrong way to drink your cocktail and the one that's in your hand. I'm gonna show you this. Uh, super, super simple here. So three ingredients. You can modify this endlessly. First thing first, our syrup. And this is where one of the smoke and the coffee comes in. We made a two to one rich Demerara syrup. So a raw sugar, two parts, one part coffee to dissolve that in as opposed to using water. Bring some nice flavor, really goes well with the whiskey as well. Uh, just, just ties it together and a little bit more. Instead of just adding sweet to the cocktail with our syrup, we're also adding some depth of flavor and building it all out. We're gonna add our bitters here. We see the same aromatic bitters tossed into every cocktail all the time. And there's so many great companies out there. One of my favorites is Bittered Sling. I'm using their Kensington bitters, which is an aromatic variety that you can sub in anywhere that aromatic uh, bitters is called for in a recipe. You can go ahead and use these. Um, it's gonna add amazing depth, a lot of flavor, a lot of integrity behind this brand. I'm also adding a little bit of their cherry bitters. And it was a little uh, bit, Difficult to choose, I wasn't sure which direction I want to go today with it. They've got a chocolate bitter, they've got a, um, a coffee bitter, a plum root beer, any of those would have been awesome in this cocktail as well. So the reason I'm building this in my mixing glass instead of going straight into uh, my serving glass is because I'm using barrel strength bullet here. So uh, typically I want to go at least 100 proof when I'm mixing a brown and stirred cocktail like this. Uh, here we jumped way up uh, to barrel strength and so that extra bit of dilution from the stirring in the mixing glass and then putting it into our serving glass is going to be welcome in this case. We're gonna ice down our mixing glass here. I'm gonna 
drop in our sphere that we've melted. It's not a big, beautiful, clear piece of ice. You can check out Elkademics.com and our buddy Camper English actually talks quite a bit about how you can make perfectly clear ice at home. I didn't go the extra mile uh, this time around because I've got food in my freezer. Uh, you've got a little bit of extra room and a little igloo cooler though. Really easy to make some perfectly clear ice at home without any fancy equipment. That should do the trick there. I'm gonna go ahead and strain right into our, our old fashioned glass. And then you gotta have that orange oil in my opinion. I'm using my Y peeler, gonna get a nice big swath of orange twist. Take the extra second just to trim it down. I think uh, the visual is worth it. You know, life's too short for half-ass cocktails. So uh, a nice little twist, quick burst of orange oil over the top. And then I'm gonna pop it in the smoking box. We've got a little bit of hickory in this case, uh, different flavors of wood, different types of wood will lend different flavors. So whatever you're in the mood for, cedar, oak, applewood, different things like that. We don't want a ton of smoke in there, just enough to stick clean to the glass, not overpower the whiskey. We've got some beautiful uh, bourbon in there uh, and all those flavors, but the cherry, the coffee, uh, that rich uh, Demerara syrup, all with all the barrel flavors that we're pulling out of the bullet, a little bit of hickory smoke, it's really gonna tie it together and make us a beautiful double smoked coffee, old fashioned. Cheers. So that's Charles Jolie. Make sure you're going and checking out his stuff at crafthousecocktails.com. And again, that is crafthouse, crafthousecocktails.com. He is an incredible uh, bartender, great human being. Look for him on the social medias. And we're going to be doing more of these as we are looking to uh, stay, uh, stay sane in these times. I'm trying to create as much possible content as I can. So tell me what might be of interest to you. I'm looking to fill up the docket with musicians, bartenders, chefs. Uh, let me know what, what you would like to see. Obviously I can, you know, taste whiskey, but let, let's face it. Uh, I can't taste whiskey 24-7. I'd, I'd end up in the grave. That, that would be bad. So there are days I have to take off. Sometimes I'm just not in the mood to do uh, do a tasting like that. So uh, give me, throw ideas at me, um, whatever that you think that, you know, I can do. Start thinking about things that would be outside of, out of my norm, outside of the whiskey realm, if you will. And... Uh, let let's let's figure this out together. Let's have some fun together during this time of uh, you know being in the house and uh, cooped up. Uh, I'm uh, really really excited about this. I see we've got some really good ideas, some food and spirits pairings, infusion smokings with the ingredients. Um, people love the bartenders, uh, bartender chefs, whiskey industry insiders, whiskey distillers, master tasters, etc. Love all that. We can do all of that. So keep, keep, keep this stuff coming. Make sure you're clicking that subscribe button, click a, hit the like button, uh, to be quite candid with you all. This is, this is a hard time on everybody. Um, and I'm going to try to bring as much of the industry and information to people as I can through YouTube. So this YouTube is my is my one portal that I can flick it on and, you know, get people and talk to people. And so I'm hopeful that we're, um, we're able to get through this together and we can, um, we can have a little bit of, uh, entertainment here and there. Kilko says, uh, you could read from one of your books. You know, what's weird about that is that I have, uh, all my books with the exception of, uh, two are on audible and um you know uh 
I just, I've never really had any interest of reading my books. Kind of weird. I guess, you know, I think it's, some of it is like, you know, you create something and then you want, you move on to the next thing with the exception of a couple. Um, RJ says, uh, Fred reading one of his books cover to cover while drinking would be amazing. Maybe for you guys, not for me. That would be bad. That would be very bad. Um, the links get links a cut cat, uh, says maybe do some collaborations with uh, other whiskey YouTubers. Yeah, that's been, uh, been doing that actually. And, uh, been, uh, been coming up with some ideas to, to do things. So, uh, Someone, uh, Jeremy Kendrick writes, uh, you could do an update, the Firefox series, do a video tutorial. Yeah, no. All right, everybody. Well, I'm going to go ahead and cut out here. I've got conference calls and all kinds of fun things to do today. But make sure you're hitting that subscribe button because I'm going to have a lot of these things coming out. And sometimes they'll be planned. Sometimes they uh, won't be. And Fred, I will not be doing a vodka tasting unless it's to raise money for charity. Thanks, everybody. And speaking of vodka, remember, it sucks. Until next time, cheers.